1927 was one of those years when the world seemed to take a leap into the future. Lucky Lindy, Charles Lindbergh was the first person to fly solo across the Atlantic from New York to Paris. Safely on the ground, he had barely cut the engine when the crowd reached the plane. They shouted his name over and over again, Lindbergh, Lindbergh. The Sultan of SWAT, Babe Ruth, made baseball history, hitting a record 60 home runs for the season. There he is, circling the bases after knocking a homer. The New York Yankees won the championship. And Talking Pictures arrived with the jazz singer, the first feature film with synchronised sound dialogue. Wait a minute, wait a minute, you ain't heard nothing yet. On May 18, 1927, in the rural township of Bath, near Lansing, Michigan, it's the last day of the school year. Around 300 students are in class at the Consolidated Primary and High School on Main Street. At 8.43am, a massive explosion rips through the three-storey north wing of the school, bringing down the roof. The blast can be heard for miles around. Bath locals and nearby farmers rush to the scene of devastation, many assuming there must have been a gas leak. They start digging through the rubble. Contemporary accounts depict an appalling sight. There was a pile of children, about five or six under the roof, and some of them had arms sticking out, and some had legs, and some just their heads sticking out. They were unrecognisable because they were covered with dust, plaster and blood. The school's caretaker, Andrew Kehoe, a former school board treasurer, electrician and struggling farmer, drives up outside the school in his Ford truck, steps out of the vehicle. Witnesses later say Kehoe, holding a rifle, beckoned the school superintendent, Emery Huke. Then they're shouting moments later, a gunshot and another huge explosion. Both men are killed instantly. So is eight-year-old Cleo Clayton, who'd survived the first blast. Two of the rescuers, retired farmer Nelson McFarren and Bath postmaster Glenn Smith, also suffer fatal injuries. Bewildered parents and townspeople continue to dig through the rubble, not knowing what might happen next. It is a miracle that many parents didn't lose their minds before the task of getting their children out of the ruins was completed. It was between five and six o'clock that evening before the last child was taken out. Dozens are saved, but 36 children and two teachers are dead. America was stunned. The Bath School disaster briefly knocked Charles Lindbergh off the front page. The following day, around 100,000 cars drove along Main Street to see what was left of the consolidated school building. By now it was clear this had been no accident. Andrew Kehoe had blown up his truck, which he'd packed with dynamite and shrapnel to cause maximum carnage. Rescuers found more than 200 kilograms of dynamite and other explosives which had failed to detonate in the south wing of the school. It was rigged to a barrel of petrol and an alarm clock set to go off at 8.45 a.m. If it wasn't for a short circuit, the massacre would have been even worse. Before heading to the school, Kehoe had also blown up his farmhouse and killed his wife, Nellie, who he'd brought home from hospital while she was suffering tuberculosis the day before. As investigations got underway, it soon became clear Andrew Kehoe had been planning the attack for over a year, angered after he lost an election for the position of town clerk. He bitterly resented an increase in taxes to pay for the school on top of Nellie's medical bills. He was notified last June that the mortgage on his farm would be foreclosed. And that may have been the circumstance that started the clockwork of anarchy and madness in his brain. Despite that alleged anarchy and madness, Kehoe spent months carefully planting explosives in the basement of the school on the pretense of fixing the electrical wiring and other odd jobs. It was coldly calculated revenge. At his burned out farm, Andrew Kehoe left a note. It read, Criminals are made, not born. But experts at the coronial inquest disagreed. They said Andrew Kehoe was born a psychopath with a violent temper, no empathy or remorse. In the months ahead, two more children would die from their injuries, taking the total death toll to 47. Today, memories of the Bath School massacre have been largely swept away by the passage of time and some of the happier events of 1927. 
Lindy landed in Paris just two days later. And pretty soon there was a stock market crash, the Great Depression and World War II and yet more stunning acts of violence. But to this day, the bombing in Bath, Michigan is the deadliest school attack in America's history and one of the worst ever acts of domestic terror.